So I'm going to build off of what we did last time and take a deeper look at Xamarin Forms list views and data binding. So I have the same application that I left off with before except I've added a few things to it. So first of all my data source I've removed all the string lists we're not going to use them anymore and I have added this image name property to my product class and then down here in the product list I've come up with some more reasonable product names and hopefully more reasonable product prices and then I've added an image name for each of them. Now these images I got from a site called Flat Icons and since I use them I have to give them credit for it so you can see down there at the bottom of the screen where the where you can go see Flat Icons but however I have a directory on my machine with these 10 icons in them and, I'm, and what I want to do is I want to display these icons in the cell with the with the product that it corresponds to. Well the problem is that with iOS and Android the way that they access resources such as this is different so I'm actually going to have to add these resources to each platform specific project individually. It's not a big deal though so for example in iOS there's this resources folder and I just added them in there. What I did is I would right click add, add files, navigate to the directory where they are, select them all, and then, and then tell Xamarin Studio to copy the files into the, into the project. For Android, it's a similar process, except you use resources drawable. So with that done, let's take a look at the XAML now and see how to set this up. So at the end of the last video, I said I wasn't a designer and therefore things weren't going to look very nice. Well, I thought about it and I probably could have made more of an effort, so that's what I did. So in this case, what I've got is I've got uh, a view cell again, but I've got a stack layout this time that actually has an image and a stack layout inside of it. So what I'm going to do is the first item, the leftmost item in this first stack layout is going to be an image which is going to have a source and I'm going to bind that source to the image name property of the product that it corresponds to. But the image name is just does not have any file extension and I need to have that .png file extension on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the string format and the string format will take a format string which will have a placeholder 0 being the first value to fill in and then what it will do is it will use this image name here to fill in the placeholder and then put the .png on the end. So that's how I get the full file name. So then to the right of the image I have another stack layout which this time is oriented vertically and I'm going to have the two informational labels in there. The first one we saw before. The second one we actually saw before as well but this time what I'm doing is since this is a since this is a money or currency value I'm using string format again to place a dollar sign in front of it and then just changing the text color to green and the font size to small. So let's pull up the simulator here, the iOS simulator, and you'll see how this looks. So this looks much, much better, much more pleasing to the eyes. And then in Android, it looks very similar. All right, but lists are not meant to be read and scroll only. Many times what you want to do is you want to select an item on a list and have some action take place. Let's see how we could do that. So this is the exact same XAML as before. The only difference is that there's this item selected event now and what I'm going to do is I'm, as I'm providing a handler called on item selected. Before I do that though I want to mention this row height equals 60, which was actually in which was actually in the layout XAML as well. I neglected to mention this. Xamarin Forms will not automatically adjust the height of a row to accommodate the size of the content in that row, and so the default default row height is probably something like 35 or 40 is actually truncating the content to fit within the default row height, and so what I did is I played around with some values and found out that 60 was a good value for this one that's what's preventing the content from being smushed together or truncated or something. But however, back to our selection. So the on item selected 
handler is going to be in the code behind. And what it's going to take is it's going to take a sender like all event handlers do, and it's going to take a variant of event args. In this case, selected item changed event args. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to check to make sure that the selected item is not null. And the reason why is because the item selected event is triggered not only when an item is selected, but also when an item is deselected. And when an item is deselected, the selected items property of the event args is null. So this means that we have actually selected an item, not deselected one. And in that case, what I'm going to do is there's going to be the selected item property, which is which is an object, but we know it's going to be a product, so we'll turn it into a product, and then can simply display an alert with the name. So let's see how that looks in iOS. So go over here to the selection tab, select one and it gives us the name of the product that we selected. And let's see how it looks in Android. Now you might notice something that may be desirable behavior. It depends on your application. The item that is selected remains highlighted after the alert goes away. Now sometimes, like I said, this may be what you want, but in case it isn't, there's a way to prevent this. The list view itself, which is which is what actually sends the event, has a selected item property on it. Setting that to null will cause the highlight to disappear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my startup project to iOS, and actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rebuild all of this. Now that the build is done. I'm going to run this on the iOS simulator first and when it comes up I'll select the selection tab and you'll notice that that behavior is no longer the case. It's easier to see up here on the top one. So watch cloud storage. Don't watch for the alert but when you but watch cloud storage and you'll see that it faded. It faded out before the alert was before the alert was removed. Let's go over here and now let's with that one and let's switch to the droid project and see what happens and see how this looks on Android. And go to the selection tab and let's click on the mouse and you see that it doesn't even try to it doesn't even highlight it at all because before it had that orange highlight. Okay, this is great. Now there's one more thing that we might want to do. Sometimes there are quick options that can be performed when an item is selected. And to pr present those options, you could use a context menu. Now context menus are displayed different ways on different devices, and we'll get to that. But first of all, let's see how we would define a context menu. So I've got this context menus, XAML over here, and all it has changed is to the view cell I've added some context actions. The context actions can have one or more menu items and there's text and then also there's a clicked property for if that menu item is selected and I've got an event handler called on favorite because what I'm going to be doing here is simulating the process of adding items to a favorites list. We're not actually going to add them yet but this will just get the UI set up. Now there's something interesting here. When on favorite is called, it will be passed the sender. Now the sender is actually the menu item that was clicked, but what we would probably want to access in that event handler is the product that corresponds to the view cell for the menu item for which was clicked. So in other words, we want to, so in other words, the sender is going to be a menu item. It's actually going to be an object, but we can cast it to a menu item. But what we want is we want the product. So we can actually pass or attach more data to this menu item and the way that we do that is with this command parameter attribute. Now the command parameter attribute, we can use data binding with it. However, in the past what we've done is we've bound to a specific property such as name or unit cost. In this case, using the dot is going to bind to the product itself. So let's see how that's going to look in 
the code behind. So in the code behind, of course, in the constructor, nothing new here. But here is the on, but here's the on favorite event handler. So like I said before, the sender is a menu item. So we're going to get the selected menu item here, and then the command parameter is attached to that menu item. We know it's going to be it's a, it's an object but we know we can cast it to a product and now what I can do is I can display the name of the product that was favorited when we selected that when we tap that menu item. Now this syntax here this is actually uh, something in C sharp 6 called string interpolation and Xamarin supports it so what's happening here is preceding the string with a dollar sign and then inside of curly braces can put expressions that in the value of the expression will be inserted into the string. So let's see how this looks. I'm going to go add the startup project again and run the solution. Go over to the context menu. Now like I said different platforms implement this in different ways. The way that iOS does it is with a swipe. So I'm going to swipe on monitor and you'll see that I get this favorite button. Now if I click outside of the favorite button the, select, the context menu goes away. However if I click on the button it tells me what I clicked on or favorited even though it's not actually favoriting it. Let's see how it works on Android. Stop this. Set the startup project to the Android and run it. Go over to the context menu tab. Well, now in Android what you're going to do is you're going to do a long press. So I'm going to press and hold and notice that the item that I pressed that I pressed and held on is highlighted and the others are kind of grayed out and also this menu up at the top appeared. If I click favorite it will tell me what I favorited. However, if I click the back button it will take no further action. So that's how you can do a few more involved things with list views and data binding with Xamarin Forms.